want to provide a very basic overview of vector autoregression or VAR. So make sure you don't confuse this with V little a r, which is the notation for value at risk. Now, vector autoregression is just an extension of the autoregressive model, which we've discussed before, which is a time series um, that is regressed on its own past values. So for example, an AR1 model might be represented by yt equals b0, so some constant, plus b1, some coefficient, times the lagged value of t, plus an error term. And of course you can have more than one lag. You could have two or three, and we call those ARP models, where p is the number of lags we specify. Now suppose you have two or more variables you believe follow some sort of autoregressive model, and that they're related. What you can do is you can use a multivariate time series model. So this is a, an approach for modeling two variables of interest. Do not confuse that with the terminology of multiple regression where we have one independent variable and lots of deep, uh, I'm sorry, one dependent variable and lots of independent variables. So there are three types of VAR models. There's the reduced form model. In this case, VAR expresses each variable as a linear function of its own pass values, pass values of all other variables being considered, and a serially uncorrelated error term. So this is the simplest model. The second approach is what's referred to as a recursive form. Here, VAR constructs the error terms in each regression to be uncorrelated with the error in the preceding equation. For example, suppose we have the following variables of interest. Number one, inf the inflation rate. Number two, the unemployment rate. And number three, the interest rate. Okay? And we're going, we're going to model them in this order. So the first model, or the first equation, is going to be for the inflation rate. And in this case, inflation is the dependent variable, and the regressors are, are the lagged values of all three variables, that is, inflation rate, unemployment rate, and the interest rate. The unemployment rate models are second equation, and in this case, the unemployment rate is the t-dependent variable, and the regressors are the lagged values, again, of all three variables, plus the current value of inflation, that is, the um, current value of the equation we did before. And then in the final model, the interest rate is the dependent variable, and the regressors are the lagged values of all three variables, the current value of inflation, plus the current value of the unemployment rate. So you can see that the order matters, right? If we did not in the interest rate first, then it would just be dependent on the um, lagged values of the three variables and nothing else. But this is the last equation, so you need the current value of the interest rate and the current value, I'm sorry, uh, the current value of the inflation rate and the current value of the unemployment rate. The third model is what's referred to as a structural model. So in this case, VAR uses economic theory to sort out the contemporaneous links among the variables. So let's consider an interest rate model using the Taylor rule. John, this, is, this was uh, devised by John Taylor, who's an economist at Stanford, and it's, it says that the interest rate, RT, equals some um, desired interest rate, and it's going to be adjusted based on the average um, inflation rate minus this desired or targeted inflation rate minus 1.25 um, the average unemployment rate minus this target unemployment rate and again plus all the lagged values and an error term. So here we put in the contemporaneous one is going to be modeled based on some sort of theory we have. So let's take a look at a model here, uh, a reduced form model. Suppose you're interested in the sales of beef and chicken, and you, think, you believe that both beef and chicken follow an AR1 model. 
but in addition you believe chicken sales last month will impact beef sales this month and that beef sales last month will impact chicken sales um, this month so that sort of makes sense right if their beef sales were up last month it might be a sign that people desire beef more and they're switching away from chicken so maybe chicken is going to be down this month perhaps if uh, chicken sales are down last month it means perhaps that people are um, interested in beef now and shifting away to beef so maybe we project that beef will be up this um, this month so basically you have this model here so beef in time period T equals you know some coefficient times beef in the previous period okay beef sales in the previous period plus another coefficient times chicken sold in the previous time period plus an error term then likewise with chicken chicken in the current period is going to equal um, some coefficient times beef in the previous period beef sold in the previous period and then another coefficient times chicken sold in the previous period and then an, an error term the reason we refer to it as vector autoregression is the equation the two equations I listed before can be written out in vector form okay and if you know matrix algebra you can multiply these out and you'll get the same equation we had before you'll get uh, a11 times b2 uh, t minus 1 plus uh, a12 times ct minus 1 etc so you get the you get exactly the same equations how do you estimate these equations well it turns out that these two equations are actually estimated using ordinary least squares now you don't really have to worry about that if you happen to be using you know e views or Gretel or you know any of these econometric packages they all do the var estimation but it turns out that you could just run this with OL OLS and you get the uh, same results so let me just write down a recursive model here too so you can see that so suppose beef is our first equation and chicken is our uh, second in the recursive system then you can see that beef is just a function of the past values of beef and chicken where uh, chicken is a function of the past values of beef and chicken and the current value of beef okay and they both have an error term so I hope that gives you sort of a general understanding of uh, um, vector autoregression and how it's used and perhaps in some future videos I'll show you how to estimate these in some statistical package